What's going on? My name is Iceman. Welcome back to Digital Combat Simulator World. Welcome back to the F-16 Charlie. Technically the F-16CM. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to do my first sort of tutorial on the F-16. Um, now, I normally wouldn't be doing tutorials because, honestly, my confidence level is not very good. And, you know, I, my main fear is giving you guys information that is incorrect. So, uh, but I'm going to give it a go to the best of my abilities. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a real pilot, obviously. I'm, I'm just a virtual pilot, but I have extensive experience as a virtual pilot. I have over a decade of experience uh, flying pretty much everything. Um, oh, you know, a whole bunch of different types of simulators. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to do my first sort of tutorial here. And the tutorial is how to start the S16C. Now, I know there are videos out there that teach how to start, how to like start the S16C in a quick, ready to run fashion. You know what I mean? So, like, they just do like, uh, Elexis battery switch to main power and then they just do JFS start to turn on the avionics switches, turn on the HUD and boom you're done. Uh, and INS and stuff away for that and then boom you're done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in detail. I'm actually going to do the complete startup procedure. So I'm going to do something a little bit different that I have not really seen. I mean maybe there's some people out there that have done it but I haven't seen the videos, any videos where people go through the full startup procedure. So I'm going to go through the full, complete start procedure of the F-16C in DCS World. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, the armaments we have are just eye candy. I will say that I do have a lightning teapod on the on the uh, right hard point, right chin hard point there. Right there. That's the lightning teapod there. Uh, oh, excuse me. So I have that there just so that I can show you how to power that on and stuff. Uh, just to have a complete start procedure, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is... Uh, the first thing you need to do um, is actually... Uh, uh, First, uh, oh, and I will say, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of tired, guys, so just forgive me if I, like, pause and don't make much sense. Uh, but I'm going to be using a checklist here. Uh, I'm going to be using a checklist so that, and I'm going to go through this checklist and show you guys what all this stuff means up to this here, okay? This here, up to the before takeout checklist. So we're going to go through all of this and all of this, okay? That is what we're going to be doing here. And uh, as a bonus, added bonus, I'll show you how to shut down the F-16. I'll show you how to start and shut down the F-16 all in this video. Uh, uh, so, let me see, do I have a shutdown checklist on here? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, so before we get started, before we actually do anything and start flipping switches, we need to do what's called a pre-flight check. So we need to technically, we can't do this in DCS, but you have to go outside the aircraft and before you actually get in the jet, you need to go uh, around the aircraft, check there's no like cracks or anything like that around the airframe and you need to like, you need to check everything, you know, make sure everything looks good, all the caps are sealed and, you know, whatever whatever doors need to be opened or closed are open or closed the way they should be everything looks normal okay so it's like a pre-flight check now what i'm going to do is well i don't know what you would term that but i would just can term that like i don't know pre pre something i don't i don't know what you would term it but uh what i'm going to do is the pre-flight check you can do in uh tcs world and that is uh, checking all the switches. Before you start flipping switches and stuff, check to make sure that everything is uh, off and in the positions that you want them to be in before flipping switches. Because you don't want to turn on, start flipping switches, and then something be on and start 
activating when you don't want it to, such as, you know, Master Arm. If that was Master Arm on when you got in the jet, that's, I mean, weapons weapons deployment is inhibited on the ground, but, you know, regardless, you if you get in the jet, get, hop in the cockpit, sit down, and you see this Master Arm button on arm, or even simulate, you don't want it like that. So it's like, oh, you got to flip that off before you give power to the jet, because, I don't know, Let's say for whatever reason the jet could bug. Uh, there might be a bug in the system. The jet's malfunctioning. You turn on the power. Let's say a missile fires. Then you're in deep shit for that. You know, that's never really happened before. At least I've never heard of anything like that. But you know, it's possible that the jet could bug. There could be a error in the software. Something wasn't updated or whatever, and it could screw something up, and something dangerous could happen. Okay, and it's all safety. You know, these rules aren't here to be annoying. They're, they're here to make sure people are safe. Because, you know, this is an aircraft. It's technically a dangerous piece of machinery. And plus, it's an unstable, unstable airframe. So, you know, it's a fighter jet. So, you've got bombs and shit on it, you know? So, it's like, you know, you've got real live weaponry on it. You know, if something fails, you know, it could be catastrophic and deadly. So, you need to be very careful. So what I'm going to do is do a pre-flight check. So, so I'm just looking. You go from the from left rear, and then to the front, down, and then right, and then right rear. That's how you do the the pre-flight check. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is look at the left rear. Let's pause my tracker off a sec. The anti-G button here, you can't do that, but you would test that, obviously. Uh, but make sure this is off. Propeat off. EPU gen off. Very important. Make sure this is off. Make sure this is on normal. Make sure these switches are up. This is off. Make sure digital backup off. Auto uh, this is on normal. This can be either, I guess. Uh, bit off. Ever is it off. Make sure this is on auto. Make sure terms are set and everything looks good. Normal. And then... Uh, And then down to the fuel panel, you want to make sure that this is in the master position, okay? You want this in the master position with the guard down. You want engine feed on normal. If it's not, switch it to normal. Make sure this is closed. Take anything off. C9 knob. Uh, UFC or backup. Oh, sorry. Uh, C9 knob. You technically want it on backup. Uh, now, I will show you how to start it up and do the radio communications real quick it's just you know it's not gonna i'm not gonna actually get going or anything but i'll show you what to do and how to do it through the through the radios and stuff okay so iff master you want this on standby so it's off right now right so you want to switch this to standby okay standby and then anti-collision you want with that we want these on Formation lights, that's up to you, but you want the master on normal, and you want, you, I put this on steady, but you really want them in flash. Uh, you really want them in flash, but I put it on steady. And the navigation and fuselage lights, you can have them on or off, depending on the conditions. If it's a cloudy day, and, you know, it's overcast and stuff, you want them on. Uh, I always turn them, I either turn them to bright or dim. I want to turn them on dim this time. And technically, you know, it's it's VFR weather, so you don't really need the navigation lights today, but I'm going to turn them on. Uh, I'm going to turn them on. You know, normally in this weather, you would just keep them off and just leave this on normal and stuff, but I'm going to turn the formation lights off. Uh, uh, the most important thing is to have this on normal and have the anti-collision light on. That is the most important thing for um, uh, for when you start up the jet, okay? Because the anti-collision light, the lights don't come on. The lights, like, you know, the navigation light, anti-collision light, yada yada. That stuff does not come on until the engine is on. But uh, you still need to have these lights on. Oh, the master switch and stuff on. You still need to have it on and ready uh, to accept, uh, you know, to turn them on. You need to still have this like this in order for, um, you know, it to be the most realistic because, you know, 
when you turn an engine on in the real world on an aircraft you have your beacon light or you know anti collision light on uh, before you start the engine but you know the most we can do in the set 16 is have it on while the engine starts okay so if that anti collision light on, is on on the S16 it means the engine is starting so you want this on and you want the anti collision on and on always unless you're fencing out of course or fencing in sorry so EPU you want to make sure that's off uh, EPU is off and the EPU run light is off you want to make sure this is on normal with the guards down okay so that's what you want to do and we can't manipulate this so this can be uh, ignored uh, main power switch you want this off you want all the lights off too and this for the ECM uh, you can either have this like this or you can leave it like this or you can just if you're going to use the ECM you can just do that okay and the ECM is off so it doesn't matter so you can just you know uh, the ECM switch is off so you can uh, you don't have to worry about it uh, really but uh, so now on to the audio panels you have audio 2 you want it to come on so you can talk to like ground crew and stuff like that you want ILS uh, you can turn these on if you want I'm going to turn this all the way up uh, you know, actually I'm going to turn the tack on off because it kept uh, beeping in the last video so this is up to you whether you want ILS or tack on or off that's up to you uh, you can obviously change this later but uh, but yeah now the cipher switch you the hot mic switch you can have this off or in hot mic now if you have the canopy closed and you want to refuel or rearm or whatever and you want to uh, have the canopy closed and you want to talk to the ground crew you need this in hot mic but for now you can keep it in off threat we can keep this on this we can keep on this we can keep on and the most important thing a com one and com two and uh, I forgot that over here we need to contact the top the uh, ground uh, in order to uh, request engine start up properly so to do that I forgot I need to switch this to backup okay like that so you know I switch to backup and then uh, make sure the jet fuel starts to switch is off and the run light is off Make sure everything is off the way it should be, like that. Okay, good. Master arm off, laser arm off, arm off on normal, autopilot off, stuff like that. Can't just enable off. Cat 1, Cat 3. Um, you can switch this later or now. So I just usually switch it now. So it's Cat 3 because we're Cat 3. We have bombs and stuff, so we're heavy. And then uh, we check here, everything's good. Make sure that's a normal good. Now we go to here and then we go to the hood. Uh, we want to make sure all these switches are off. This we can uh, change right now if we wish. So I'm going to switch this to VVVAH and then this to auto. We don't have to do that. This is up to you. The hood panels are all up to you, but I do that because I like it that way. Okay. Next, consoles. No, console lighting, sorry. If it's a if it's a dark day, not a dark day or uh, like overcast or you have or it's night time, you want to turn these on, okay? But uh, we're gonna keep these off for now. And we're turn this up uh, if we want. And then air source switch, we want it on normal, okay? And just leave the tap on auto, okay? And then down here we want the last panels here we want oxygen on uh, normal and normal okay uh, and then uh, uh, anti ice auto if it's off switch to auto and then make sure this is off all these switches are off means ABT off okay and technically it's not implemented in DCS just yet I don't think but you want to make sure that the DTU, the data transfer unit, is in the DTC receptacle, data transfer cartridge receptacle, okay? So you want to make sure it's all in there, okay? That's what you would want to do there, okay? Alright. So that's the pre-flight check done. 
So now that everything, also you need to make sure this is caged, okay? So that, that now that all of that's there like that, we can now start giving power to the jet. Uh, and also you can change the brightness of these uh, if you want. I'm gonna turn this all the way up, okay? Uh, and what I'm gonna do is actually close the canopy first because uh, that's usually what I do. I always close the canopy first. Uh, but I will show you uh, uh, what happens if you don't close the canopy. You have a canopy light come up here. Okay, so I'll show you that. Okay, so let's start giving power to the jet. So if you go to the checklist, you have before start checklist. So it says main power to battery. So what that means is you go here to your electrical system panel and you go main power to battery okay so you flip the switch once to battery and then next it says uh, FSCS power test switch test or off now what you need to make sure of is that these lights come on as you see here okay so you have main gen on standby gen on and aircraft battery FSCS relay light on okay if you see that everything's working normally now what you need to do is you need to go back here to this FLCS power panel and test it. So you right click and hold to test. Now you'll see aircraft battery 2 FLCS light on, FLCS relay light off, and the FLCS PMG lights on. You want that. And then finally you have the FLCS power branches A, B, C, and D on. If you see all that, you're good. The test passed. Now let go, and everything should go back to the way it was. You should have the aircraft battery 2 FLCS light off, FLCS relay light back on, main gen, back, main gen on, standby gen on, and FLCS PMG light off. And then finally, your FLCS branches should turn back to off. Okay? So that's what you want there. So if you do all that and it works fine, you're good. And then if your gen light's off, uh, uh, Ibuogen lights, oh, main power to main power, sorry. So you go main power to main power. So I flip this up to main power. Okay, good. And then APU gen, gen lights off. So you want to make sure that the EPU lights are off here. And then the lights are off here, including the run light. That's very important. Okay, that run light's on. You should uh, tell the crew chief and abort the aircraft or whatever. Okay. And then finally, canopy close and lock, and parking brake set. So I'm going to set the parking brake real quick. So it's right here, I just get parking brake. So up once to parking brake. Now it's set. Now you need to close and lock the canopy. Now, when the battery's on, you'll see engine, hydraulic oil pressure, and if the canopy's uh, open or it's closed but not locked, uh, you'll see this canopy light here. Uh, which is normal, you want that. And then uh, you have secondary engine control and electrical system lights on. So that's what you want there, okay? So now, to close the canopy, you can either, either do left control Charlie, or you can go here and click this lever here, this little, this little switch here, click it down, left click, and the canopy will come down. Wait till the sound finishes and let go. Okay. Now you see the canopy light is still on. That's because you need this canopy lock bar. You need to put this down and stow it. So you click that, right or left click, light goes up. Good. That's what you want. And then uh, back to break set. Good. JFS switch start two. When engine 20%, the rollers are idle. Manage your engine parameters. Now, I don't remember all the engine parameters, uh, so I'm not going to go into that, but I don't remember like what parameters you need, uh, like what the numbers are. I don't remember them because I can't remember that shit. Uh, so I, I'm not going to go into like what they should be at any one time or whatever. Uh, uh, but yeah, so... So that's that. Um, so 
Now we get to start the engine, but before we do that, we have to contact the tower or ground and ask uh, clearance to start up. But to do that, we need uh, technically the S16 needs to use the F1 controllers, the engine needs to be running. But if you need to request start up, you can't do that. There's no use starting up the aircraft to ask if you can start up, you know? So you have this backup option here with the CNI knob. So you switch that to backup. And then you can use this UFC panel here. So switch it to main. It does its test. 3270, that's already the right frequency. If it's not, switch this to preset or manual. And if it's on manual, use these knobs. If it's on preset, use the preset. And there's your preset card there. Okay. So now we're going to contact tower. ATC. Now let's request startup. In field, one, one. Request startup. Enfield one one. Clear for startup. It's working this time. Nice. So now you clear for startup. Now you can close that. Uh, uh, so now we can turn this off if we want. We can keep it on, doesn't matter. And then so you're not no UFC. Uh, so it's back to UFC. Now we can start the engine. So to start the engine, you go to this uh, jet fuel starter panel here. So you can either do start one or start two. Both work. I've tested both and they both work. Okay. Start one works with a right click. Start two works with a left click. Now what you want is when you do start one or start two, you wait for a little bit, wait till this run light comes on, and once the run light comes on, you go over here, check your RPM, and make sure it goes to 20%. Once it goes to 20%, uh, then you take your idle detent, uh, your throw idle detent, and then you flip it, uh, you, uh, I forget what it's called in the F-16, but you take your idle detent and you flip it up to idle, okay? And it's a key bind, you can't do it through... Uh, you can't do it through the mouse, you have to do it through the keybind. Okay, mine's left control uh, home for me. It might be right control home for you, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to do start one. I'm going to do start one. Most people do start two. You can do start two, but I'm going to do start one just to show you, prove to you it works, okay? So start one now. You're going to hear something, stuff come on, okay? I'm going to wait for that run light to come on. Run light's on. Okay, now go to your, your, your RPM. Wait till it gets to 20, which is almost there. Okay, now it's a 20. Now use that key bind to go to idle, off to idle, and leave the throttle where it is and just wait. And watch if that fun turbo the temperature make sure it doesn't get too high. And make sure at 55% your JFS run light goes off and your and your uh, JFS switch turns to off. Okay. And you need to make sure all these lights are out except for seat not armed. You have that master caution if you wish. I'm gonna hit it. All right, so that's the engine started. Okay. So now uh, oxygen normal. So JFS switch check off. We're gonna do that. Oxygen normal, normal or on. So normal, normal on. Okay, we did that. Propeat switch, propeat, and then propeat test, and then off. So what we're doing now is we're testing the propeater. Okay, the propeater is the, a little heater, electronic heater, in the uh, pitot-static system. Uh, because if that ice is over, you'll lose some of your instruments, or they will be unreliable. So the heater is for icy conditions. So we're going to test it now. So first we're going to check your caution panel, make sure the light's off. Okay. 
It's off, good. Now you're gonna go here, Propeat switch, turn it up to Propeat, right click. Now check, make sure your light is off. It's off, good. Now that means it's good. So now, go to test, with the left click, left click hold, and then check it's flashing, 25 times per second. Now it's flashing, okay? Now let go, that means it just passed. And then fire and overheat detect. I remember this stuff from the from the uh, checklist, so we can continue on. Um, fire and overheat detect test push button. So press that. You should have your master caution on. You should have your engine fire on the right eyebrow light, and then you should have overheat down here. Let go. Light should go back to the way they were. Okay, off. And now Obog's bit. The Obog's bit switch no longer works in the S16C, at least in open beta, it doesn't work. Back in April 2020, um, the FSCS bit, oh, sorry, the Obog's bit switch uh, worked fine. You, you'd flip it and it would do oxy low light right here. But as you can see, if you do this, it doesn't work. This is, uh, this is something ED has, oh, what? What? What the fuck? It didn't work yesterday. Yesterday I did this and it didn't work. What the hell? Is it because I didn't start one? What the hell? What? Okay, well, that's weird because it didn't work yesterday. Now it worked and I did not update at all. So what the fuck? Well, anyways, that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to have the oxy low light come on here. Okay? So I'm glad that worked. Let me try it again. Does it actually still work? It does. It still works. Oh shit. I guess uh, ED listened to me. Because it works now. It works. Fuck yeah, dude. So that's what's supposed to happen. So you're supposed to test the airbox, light's supposed to come on, and you're supposed to be good. Okay? So that's what's supposed to happen there. I'm shocked that it's actually working now. I didn't do anything, so it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but anyways, now malfunction indicate light's test push button. You want to test that? So. Uh. My function indicator lights test push button. So uh, you want to click and hold, check for burnt bulbs, and listen to all the messages from Betty. Okay. So you're gonna check all the bulbs. Good. Good. This ECM light's supposed to come on, but it doesn't yet. Good. Good. Now we just listen. Bingo. Okay, let go. Everything goes back to normal. So, okay, avionics switches all six on. Okay, so now we go here. You turn on your modular mission computer. So, on. Come on, don't freeze. Okay, on. Store stations on. One, two, function display on, off for controls on, GPS on, data link on, mids over T on, and then INS to normal. Okay? And then finally, you can take your symbology all the way up, there you got your hood. Okay? Your heads up display. Um. Uh. So mids of it on EGI, INS, turn line, C line knob, UFC, it's already at UFC, we did that. Uh, landing gear down, three green, so you check your gear handles down, light is off, the red light is off, and you've got three green here, so you got to check that. Speed brakes, check. So to check your speed brakes, use the key bind. So I'm going to do open, 
so that board's open there and that board is open there now you have to uh, retract them that one retracted that one retracted, check indicator closed, good uh, let's see, what was I? ADI or standby attitude indicator, uncage so uncage uh, uh, uncage so you just right click go up and you want to make it level with the horizon like that okay so you do that left hot point switch as required white hot point switch as required FCR switch FCR and red altimeter switch red altimeter okay so what that means you want to go here you can click this to get rid of it so you can see so we don't have anything on the left hard point. We do have the lightning pod on the right hard point, so you want to flip that on. FCR, you can flip that on if you wish. You don't have to right now, but I'm going to flip it on just, you know. And then red altimeter, you can do red altimeter. Okay, that's safe, don't worry, because it, it's unhimited on the ground, so you're good. Um. Uh, engineer secondary engine control check second pry so be careful with this because when you do this test if you put the uh, throttle up too high um, you'll fuck up your INS so you you'll screw up your INS and then you gotta realign completely from scratch so uh, be careful with that okay so to check secondary engine control, go here on the engine and jet fuel control panel. Open this guard and put this to secondary. You will have the master caution on. And you have secondary engine control on the caution panel down here. Okay, make sure that's like that. And also make sure your nozzle position is at 0% within like 5 seconds or whatever. And make sure you hear the RPM go lower, okay? So now to do this test, you want to hold the brakes, okay? You want to hold the brakes, then throttle up to mill, and then back to idle when RPM reaches like 85% or something like that. Now, be careful with this. It's very, very sensitive. So if you just snap it to mill, you can overheat your engine and this will just go, your RPM will die and your your uh, fan turbo inner temperature would just spike and go higher and higher until you basically destroy your engine. So like this, I'll show you what not to do. So hold the brakes. If you snap it to mill, snap it all the way up or whatever, um, this will happen. And if that happens, immediately go throttle idle. Okay? So be careful with that. Okay? Now, to do this properly, what you want to do is hold the brakes, throttle up just a little bit, and then just a little bit like this. And now, throttle up a little bit more, and then snap back to idle like this. Like that. And if that does that, then you're good. Okay? Now, parking brake, keep in mind, if you do the throttle up too high, you'll screw up your INS. The way you'll know if you screw it up, this red light will go away, and your line will go away. That's how you know if you screw it up, okay? So now, uh, parking brake on, okay? So you keep the jet from rolling. And I'm going to take the uh, secondary control and then switch it back to pry. So you can either put this to pry first and then close the guard or you can just close the guard and it will automatically go to pry like so like that and if that happens check your second light goes off your master caution light goes off uh, and check your nozzle position goes back to 100% okay that's how you do that um, we're, we're like halfway done guys uh,
and this stuff's really quick. So we're pretty much a little bit, maybe like 60% done, 75% done. Uh, FOCS cycle and check. So the flight control system cycle and check. So what you want to do before you run the bit test, okay? You want to cycle your flight controllers, meaning you want to do a full wipeout. You want to go like this here and this here on the rudder. You want to do a full wipeout like that. And check your rudder. Okay, you want to do that, check your rudder. You want to do that before running the bit test because it removes air bubbles and makes sure the hydraulic uh, pressure is uh, warms hydraulic fluid and stuff, okay? So now you can run the bit test, okay? I do know that you cannot use uh, any flight controllers, so you can't move the stick or anything. It doesn't work if you move the stick and stuff, and even the speed brakes don't work when you're, you're running the bit test, okay? Uh, so bit, so you want to turn this on, so on. Now it says run. Do not switch this to off because you'll fail it, okay? Just let it run and it'll it'll it should do be fine. Okay? So fuel quantity test normal. So go down to your fuel quantity selector switch here. No. Click and hold, left click and hold to test. When you do this you'll see the forward fuel load and off fuel low lights on. And then you'll see uh uh the total lies at plus or minus 100 pounds of 6,000 pounds, okay? Then you also see forward, aft, forward right and aft left fuel uh, needles at 2,000 plus or minus 100 pounds. If you see that and you see, well technically you see master caution here, and you're supposed to see fuel up here. Uh, if you see that, then it's good. So if you see that, you're good. Now, digital backup switch, backup or off. Now, the digital backup switch is very important. Okay, so it's a line. You see it says a line? So now it's flashing ready and it's flashing a line. What that means is you can uh, you can switch this to nav. So, uh, uh, this, is, this is a little bit out of order, but I want to do this just so I don't fuck it up, okay? So, you, this is a little bit out of order, but you switch this to nav, okay? Now, now do not switch it. Do not switch it to normal again, or you're realign. Okay, leave it in nav. Okay. Also, the F16 does not have like GPS or I or uh, it doesn't have that thing that the Hornet has, where you have the um, where you can do in flight and not align and automatically keep uh, degradation from happening. Yeah, see that doesn't work in the F16. So, um, it doesn't work that I know of in the S16, so you want to keep it on nav, okay? Just keep it on nav, don't think, switch it to in-flight align and you'll be, you'll be good forever. Yeah, don't do that. Just, just keep it on nav. Yes, you'll have degradation, but it should be pretty minimal, okay? And if that does happen, just switch to in-flight align, uh, realign in-flight and you'll be good. And then switch it back to nav, okay? So, um, digital backup switch backup or off, you want to make sure the digital backup switch or the uh, bit test finishes first and then run the digital backup switch, okay? So to run the digital backup, you want to left click and switch it to the digital backup, okay? You'll see uh, warning here flashing and you'll see DBU on here and then you want to test your flight controls again. Check your elevator, wipe out your controls. Check your rudder, make sure everything looks good. Technically, the crew chief and stuff would do this for you, so you don't have to like look back and stuff. You can just focus on it, what you're doing, and then uh, they will tell you through the radio or whatever uh, if it's looking good or not. Okay? Now, the digital backup switch should be used. Now, when you turn it off, make sure the light goes off, make sure warning goes off, and you're good there. Okay? Now, uh, Make sure that uh, so the DBU is used if you have a problem with your flight controls. Your flight controls are sluggish or whatever, or they're feeling weird or whatever. Switch to DBU on and land as soon as possible. Okay, um, land as soon as possible. And if they become sluggish, eject. Okay, if become sluggish with DBU on or whatever, eject. 
because you'll lose your flight controls and you're pretty much dead if you don't eject. So yeah, that's that. So DB works. Trim AP disc. I will do this for you guys. Uh, so trim AP disc. So you want to go here. You want to do. See, it says trim AP disc normal and disc. You want to switch it to disc. Disc means disconnect. Okay. Just switch it to disconnect. Now, what you want to do is do the trim on your stick and see if anything works. Okay. Check these needles here and make make sure they do not move okay so pitch doesn't move roll doesn't move good now what you need to do you want to switch it to normal and then test that there is motion on the stick okay so pitch good that works roll okay works okay then you're good uh, and the your trim you have to fuck with this knob okay um, do you know autopilot will not work if it's set to disconnect okay also you should check if your lights are working which they are now MPU manual pitch override test so the manual pitch override is an emergency system it's right here it's an emergency system uh, that makes it so that if you're in what's called a deep stool you can get out of it okay now if you in a deep stool a deep stool is basically well pretty much everyone who's uh, play this has seen Top Gun okay so but not the new one but the old one uh, so in the old one uh, remember when Maverick and Goose are uh, spinning down to sea or whatever and they go into Iceman's heh <laughs> Iceman me they go into Iceman's jet wash and uh, and they start spinning uh, down towards uh, the ground uh, very rapidly and aggressively and they end up ejecting or whatever. Maverick's getting impatient, Ice. Come on, take the shot. Ten more seconds, then I've got him. Come on, Ice. Get the hell out of there. Let's do it, Mav. Ice, come off high right. I'm in. Five more seconds. Come off high right, Ice. I'm in. I'm off. Shit. <laughs> We're in a jet wash! Oh! Oh, shit! This is not good! Shit, we got a flame out, Mav! Engine 1 is out! Engine 2 is out! Goose, I'm losing control, I'm losing control! I, I can't, I can't control it! It won't recover! Shit! Come on up, Mav! We're out of control! This is not good! This is not good! Mayday, Mayday! Mav's in trouble! He's in a flat spin! He's heading out to sea! That was a deep stall. So they were in a deep stall. They were in a spinning deep stall, which is extremely fucking dangerous. This would have been a spinning deep stall. Now, if you're in a deep stall in the F-16, the flight control system automatically tries to correct for you. It'll actually prevent you from doing a whole bunch of flight maneuvers and uh, FOCS movements. So um, when it does that, it tries to fix itself. But it tries to fix the issue, but it can't. The flight control system, the coding in there is not good enough to fix the deep stall and get you out of it. So, but it's down to the lethal amount. So basically, if you let the flight control system try to fix it for you, you're basically dead. It's you. It's not going to fix it, and you're going to die. So what you need to do is you need to flip this manual pitch override switch to override. Okay. And then you need to check the nose down, not the nose up, nose down. So I'm going to let go real quick, just to show you. If you go in the on the outside and you do nose down on the stick, you see the elevator moves down, or the simulator, sorry, moves down that amount, right? If you do the manual pitch override and you go override and you hold it, look how far it goes. It goes down a lot further, right? See? It goes down a lot further down, okay? So to test this, what you need to do is go to override, go fall down, 
and then to test it make sure it works go to both let go of the mounting pitch override switch and make sure the uh, the angle switches back to the way it was before let go now it's switched you see it moved that means it worked properly okay and if you want to test the other one test the other one too I normally don't do this but I'm gonna test the other one too okay down let go good it works okay so that's how you test the manual pressure override critical critical bind this to a key guys if you get in a deep store in, D in DCS and the F16 um, bind this to a key and use it okay try to get out of that deep store but but I will say if you are in a deep store spinning or not and you go below 7,000 feet above ground level AGO okay you go below 7,000 feet eject chances are you're not gonna get out at that point because you can drop like a rock okay so get out of the jet eject okay say mid call mid market position or whatever have your wingman market position and get out okay okay so that's what you do there so that now the menu pitch overrides good uh, now we have the last test and that's the EPU the emergency power unit the emergency power unit is like a little APU but it's only used in emergencies the EPU uses hydrazine uh, hydrazine fuel and you can see how much fuel is in the EPU right here you can see how much fuel is in it and uh, EPU fuel and the EPU is used only in emergencies it'll come on automatically um, if it's needed okay so if you lose your engine while in flight EP will automatically come on but if it doesn't you can flip this guard up and switch it to on don't switch it to off it will work if you switch it to off and it's absolutely necessary to be used and is losing power or whatever but um, so you can flip it on manually or you can flip it off it will still work if you flip it off it should anyway if it's coded properly should still work should still uh, work sorry uh -huh. uh, but uh, if you do that, but uh, yeah, it should still work if absolutely necessary, but just keep it on normal, guys. It'll do its job. So, uh, to test the EPU, there's a few things you need to do, okay? So, what you need to do is you need to flip this EPU gen switch to, te to EPU gen, okay? But you need to have enough power in the jet, enough air pressure in the jet if you're using the test switch, you need to have enough air pressure to actually run the test, if you just do it at idle you can fuck up your electronics down here okay so uh, at least if it's coded properly, I'm not going to try it but that's what you do okay so you have to first thing you need to do is oxygen 100% okay you do in the uh, we do that for a sec so I can talk you go to 100% because hydrogen fuel is very it's like radioactive and shit and it's very lethal to breathe in and shit so you have to just do 100% oxygen and make sure the crew chiefs are away from the aircraft while you test the EPU okay okay and then so oxygen 100% breaks on now throttle to about 80%, doesn't take much, 80%, there you go, perfect, okay. Come on, my god. The, the, um, okay, there you go. So 80%, 85%, whatever, that's good. Now, brakes on, keep the brakes on. Now, EPU gen on, okay? Turn it on. Make sure the air light comes on. Make sure the EPU run light comes on for a minimum of five seconds. And lastly, make sure your FSCS power lights come on, okay? Now, to turn off the test, let go of EPU gen test switch first. Very important. Then make sure that run light goes off. Then you can turn your throttle to idle, okay? And then parking brake back on. And then oxygen. One, uh, normal okay okay so but if you don't do that if you go to idle first you'll f 
screw up the tests and you'll fuck up your electronics like I explained earlier, okay? So that is how you start the F-16C. Um, let me, uh, so EPU off, IFF on and set. So when it says EPU off, it means stop the test. Uh, uh, IFF on and set. Now, normally you would wait till you get to you get and hold short of the runway before you turn the uh, IFF to normal. But just to make it easy, I will just switch it to normal here, okay? But usually, technically, you're supposed to wait until you get to hold short line. And then, and when you do your before takeoff checklist, this here, and then you, um, and then you flip this to normal, okay? Now, one thing you'll see, most people, like, arm their jacks and see at this point, turn free over heat on, don't do that yet, okay? Because you don't want an inverted ejection on the ground, because that will kill you. It will kill the pilot, really, in reality. Uh, so, you wait... Uh, until you're holding short of the runway uh, that you're going to take off from and depart from and then you flip this to armed flip this on make sure RFF is on normal make sure everything's good and then you you take off and then when you land when you taxi uh, off of the runway flip this up to safe and then flip the propeat off okay Okay, so and that's how you do that. So that's how you start the. So once now, sorry, um, I'm sure I'll just do this. Uh, Extra lessons required. Ear and Gemma on EW. So EW is this here. Turn that on. Turns on your RWR and stuff. Test the RWR, like so. Test the RWR. Make sure the test is on and stuff. And then. Uh, test that make sure that works and then uh, config cat 1 cat 3 we're already set we set that before uh, laser code set bingo set you can do that if you wish tack on ILS on and set altimeter set EJ ILS nav and it on okay so you want to test your altimeter make sure it's set to the right barometric pressure and check ELEC and pneumatic okay so the electrical uses the can see central air data computer to check what the altitude is. Now what you want to do, right now it's a pneumatic, as you can see with the yellow pneumatic card here, you want to make sure that the difference between the ELEC and the pneumatic is within 75 feet. So you can see here this is 700, seven, or 700 or whatever. So 246, so you got 246 Eight. So if it's on this, the second one after the eight, it will be um, it will be too it will be um, a little bit off that you don't want that. So elect. So it's right there. So you can see it was it was here. So you got twenty feet, forty feet, sixty feet. Okay, you want it within the sixty or seventy five. Now it went to the 60, so that's within parameters, okay? So that's good. That's a good check, okay? Test passed. Okay. And then finally, uh, we did all that. Bingo set, you can do that if you wish. NWS on. Uh, you uh, do NWS on, you can see. AR, NWS on, like that. And then um, you can tell it's on. Now, before we... Before we finish, there's one thing that I forgot to test that was not in here. I'm glad I remembered. You have to, well, also, you have to do standby here. For all this, I do on, jammer on, embryos, you don't have that in here. Uh, but you want flare and chaff on, like that, okay? You want that on standby, and when you're in the air, you can switch to manual if you wish. I forgot to check the overfuel door. So, you go here, open it. Make sure it shows ready. If it shows ready, you're good. Close it. Make sure the light goes off. Okay, right off. Good. So, that's officially how you start 
the S16C in DCS world and you can return this if you wish okay so the jet is started and we are ready to go and you can do anti-skid to taxi anti-skid request taxi to runway in field one one request taxi to runway And then okay, once he says that, taxi light on and taxi. Okay. So that's how you taxi. Now let's look outside the jet. Everything's good. The red light on? Yeah it is, okay. This is dim, sorry. Now I'm going to do this shutdown checklist. So, uh, shutdown is very easy, very quick. Uh, not nearly as long as all this shit. Uh, but, uh, the landing taxi light off. So make sure that's off. Parking brake set, so set the parking brake. So if you're not doing scared, set the parking brake. Uh, so, uh, EDI, SAR, so HUD off. So we turn this off, so HUD off, so we turn the HUD off, okay. And then, um, EDI, standby altitude indicator. Uh, so you want to check, well, if you do the afterline checklist, you'll do go through all this, but you want to make sure your ejection seat's safe, your uh, speed breaker closed, propeller's off, like I said, uh, ECM power off, so you want to turn this off, you want to turn this off, okay. Turn off, uh, uh, HMCS if you have it on and then turn these off good make sure master armor is off laser armor is off stuff like that RFF master to stand by and you can actually turn that off at this point um, line tax light as required armament switches off safe normal and uh, rat out off avionics all six off so that's what you do there okay so you want to um, cage this like I said just to cage this pull this actually go down like this and then pull it out it's tricky why is this not working it's not it's not caging at this point so uh, it's not caging so, but it should I can't figure it out right now, but you would cage that. Um, you would try to cage that the best of your ability. Turn this off. Turn this off. Turn this off. Uh, turn oxygen off. And it switches to off first. Okay. And then mids OVT off. Turn these switches off. Come on. Off. Off. Make sure everything's off there. Okay. Mass arm off. Laser arm off. Stuff like that. And then. Um, uh, make sure all that's off. Just make sure everything is off, basically. And then um, you keep your lights on until the end. The the jet stops uh, running completely. Okay. Until the RPM goes. Until the lights come off by themselves. Do not turn the lights off. The external lights. Okay. So um, I'm going to do that. Um, and then, uh, let's see, is there anything I forgot? Yeah, so throttle off, BHP, MG lights, check off, mids off, 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 uh, off and 100%. You can do that if you want. Canopy open, okay? Uh, so now we uh, shut off the engine. So to do that, do the detent. But do it the other way. So instead of like home, instead of like um, the home key, do the end key or whatever. And then you'll shut off the engine. Oops, sorry. Wait for the jet to turn off. Now make sure the lights come on. 
Now make sure the EPU gen lights, uh, EPU PMG, EPU PMG, EPU and EPU PMG lights stay off, run light off, JFS light off, run light off. Make sure that it's very important. Now, do not so until this passes twenty percent, do not shut off the power. Okay. Um, the reason you do this is because you want to make sure that the engine nozzle stays open. Uh, so that the crew chief can go inspect it after the flight, okay? So um, with that there, we can now shut it off. Now if you want to do a hot start and f take off and fly again, shut on the en turn on the engine and fly again, you would switch this to battery, okay? And then you would switch it and then you would do a test again, like that. And then you would switch back up to main power and repeat the process we did before, okay? But we're going to switch it all the way off. Okay, so that's all the way off. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, like the chimney needle centered and stuff. Now, um, we um, we lift the canopy guard. Canopy up. Right click. It caged itself, apparently. Um... But okay, it keeps itself apparently. Um, I'm I'm chuffed with that, I guess. And uh, make sure that when you do this, you right-click it again to stop the switch, okay? Because if you just right-click it, so to close the canopy, you left-click and hold. To to open the canopy, you just right-click it, okay? But make sure to right-click it again so that you can stop it from being in this up position like that, okay? Just to you know you know, burn out the motor or whatever. But yeah, that's how you start and shut down. That's how you start up and shut down the F-16. Let's see, out of interest. Okay, we're gonna start up, yep. Uh, that's how you take off, or not take off, but that's how you start up, officially start up and turn and shut down the F-16. Charlie in DCS world. Okay, I know it's long. I know it's a lot, but um, this is how you do it in real life, I guess. Um, and technically, you would test the brakes too. I, I don't do this, but you would test brakes channel one, channel two. You would test the brakes, make sure they both work, and uh, both channels work. Brakes channel one works, brakes channel two works. You would test that, uh, but you would work with your crew chief for that. Okay, so. Uh, so yeah, that's all for this part, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, I'm not an expert. I could, I may have missed some stuff out. If I did, please let me know. Please educate everyone else in the comment section and me included in case I forgot something or you have something to add. So that's all for this part, guys. If you'd like to smash the like button, like a banner, leave a comment. I'll see you guys next time. Farewell.